Yep. All right, great. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, and I'll admit more folks as they come through. But I just want to start out by welcoming all of you and thanking you for being here today. My name is Annette Cortez. I'm the graduate program recruiter for the LMU School of Film and Television. Uh, welcome to our graduate open house. We're going to start out uh, with quick welcomes and introductions from our graduate program directors. Um, today we have with us Eugene, aka Gino Brancolini. He is the grad director for film and television production. And we also have uh, Waco Lynn, who is the grad director for writing for the screen. He could not be here this evening. Um, but uh, Mike Daly, who is the graduate director for writing and producing for television, will be speaking on behalf of both programs today. Yeah, I just want to say thank you all for joining us today. It's, um, we hope that you find this very useful. Yannette has a great deal of information to share with you, and we grad directors are here to answer any questions that, that might be out of her purview. Yes, and thank you for showing up, and I uh, hope we can answer any questions you have, and uh, hope to see you all applying. All right, thank you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the School of Film and Television here at LMU, our campus is located in Playa Vista, California. We offer three MFA programs in film and television production, writing for the screen, and writing and producing for television. These are three-year programs and they are all cohort models. Uh, for the fall 2024 entry term, our application deadline is around the corner on November 15th. So here at LMU SFTV, we're dedicated to showing a new generation how to create stories that matter, how to shape a more inclusive and equitable world, and launch successful careers in the world of entertainment. This is an aerial view of our beautiful Florida Vista campus. We are, our entry is located over on this right-hand side of what we call the boomerang. It's also known as the brickyard, um, but you can see that the surrounding area is very lively, very green, and just overall a really cool place to be. So we're gonna go and start with a quick virtual tour of our Playa Vista campus. If you've already visited us in person, then this will just be a quick refresher for you. Thank you for joining on this virtual tour of Loyola Marymount University's Playa Vista campus. Located in the heart of Silicon Beach, just down the hill from LMU's main campus, this 50,000 square foot facility has been conceived as an artful and inspiring mashup of state-of-the-art teaching and screening facilities, industry-grade post-production technology, and a genuine hub of creativity where students and faculty can work together to create, teach, and imagine. Upon exiting the elevator to our second floor, you're greeted with our reception area. To the left is the gallery, our event space, where multiple film festivals, symposiums, and conferences have been held. To the right is our Playa Vista Theater. Inside this beautiful 45-seat theater, students are treated to view their own work in industry-standard Christie 2K projection with 7.1 surround sound pumping through its QSC speaker system. The theater is equipped with a video teleconferencing system and can play back most media formats for a large variety of classes, events, and screenings. Next to the theater is the film, television, and media studies screening room. This is a high-end screening classroom with an intimate atmosphere for teaching media studies as well as evaluating rough cuts of production projects. Just past the administrative offices are the main classrooms. Each classroom is modular and easily reconfigured to the needs of the class. Not only are there multiple screens and the ability for students to screen share, but the inside surface of the walls are fully writable, so students can stand up and sketch out storyboards, script beats, or filming ideas on the spot. To the left of the classroom area is the living room. This is the prime area for students to collaborate relax, and discuss ideas. Many films are planned in this space, but it can also be used for completing homework and just hanging out. There are fully stocked vending machines and coffee is almost always hot and ready. Just past the living room is a student production office. In here, you'll find computer stations with movie magic, final draft, and everything you need to complete your pre-production. Standard forms, such as location and actor releases are on the wall. At the end of the hall is the main black box stage, this multi-use space includes extensive soundproofing with an array of lighting units, drop-down green screen, and multiple technology hookups to make it a very flexible location for classes and for student filming. Past the cage and the second elevator lobby, you enter post-production row. This area is always bustling with students working on the finishing of their film. 
In addition to classrooms for editing and sound mixing, we have a state-of-the-art sound mixing stage. It has an Epson projector, QSC 7.1 theater quality sound, and an Avid S6 mixing console. In this room, students can hear exactly how their film will sound in a movie theater. Each editing suite has an iMac Pro loaded with Avid Media Composer, Pro Tools, Adobe Premiere, and DaVinci Resolve Studio. These comfortable and intimate spaces are big enough for a director, editor, and professor to all meet together and watch the cut, but maintain a quiet and comfortable atmosphere for settling into a long session of picture or sound editing. As an added benefit, each room also has an HP Z31 Dream Color Calibrated Monitor so that you can do your color correction in any room. Color correction surfaces, like the Tangent Element or Blackmagic Micro, are also available for checkout so that you can have any tool you need right at your fingertips. The campus has two stages for Foley and ADR, or Automated Dialogue Replacement. In these rooms, you can record any footsteps you need on the open floor surfaces, record sound effects, record actors, and drop them all into your Pro Tools mix on our Avid C24 mix consoles. Past post-production row is another student meeting space. Either at the long conference table to the left or the more informal seating area to the right, students can hold pre-production meetings, meet with their professors, or sit and write while taking in the sunlight and Playa Vista scenery. Thank you for joining on this virtual tour of LMU's Playa Vista campus, and we look forward to welcoming you soon. Yay, I love watching that video. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it too. <laughs> all right, so next we're gonna jump into SFTV by the numbers. Um, so we were recently ranked number five by The Wrap and number eight by The Hollywood Reporter. Throughout all three programs, we have about uh, 250 students. So we do have our class sizes relatively small. Um, we have about 12 countries represented throughout our cohorts and our class sizes are about a 12 to one student professor ratio on average. Um, within the film and television production track, as you enter your specialization, your classes may get smaller as well. Within the last year, we had over uh, approximately 600 productions. Our film and television production students work with nine advanced cameras and 22 intermediate cameras. So depending on the courses that you are enrolled, with, enrolled in, that determines which cameras and which equipment you will be working with that semester. We also have events, uh, different networking events and career development opportunities. We have events where um, executives and directors come out to speak within uh, panel discussions or even talks. Laura Newstetter, president of film and television for Hello Sunshine, came to speak to our students. Um, we also have different screenings, panel discussions, uh, mixers and things of the sort, which are really fun to attend. Um, I know that later the directors will be able to elaborate further on events that they've put on, uh, which are really exciting. Our Office of Career and Professional Development is a great resource on campus. Um, so with our film and television production program, as you will learn very quickly, uh, we require an internship. So if you require assistance with internship allocation, we have our own representative within the Office of Career and Professional Development that can help you with that. Um, in addition to that, we have over 400 industry partnerships where our students intern and we are notorious for bringing each other up throughout these internships and programs. Um, additionally, this year, we acquired a partnership with Paramount, where our LMU students get to apply prior to the 70,000 other applicants that apply every year. So we're going to jump into the curriculum now for the MFA in film and television production. So regardless of your specialization, the first three initial semesters, you will be taking the same classes with all the students that you enter with in prod. Um, and then after that, you will declare your specialization and jump into your specialized courses. So the five areas of specialization that we offer are directing fiction, directing nonfiction, creative producing, cinematography, and editing. The curriculum for your first year would look as you see on this screen. So in uh, that, fall, that fall semester, you take directing the short film, vision and exploration, intro to cinematography, introduction to post-production, and the fundamentals of cinematic storytelling. In the spring, you would take either intermediate documentary pre-production or screenwriting for intermediate production, along with developing the short film too, which is visual storytelling, production planning, and sound for production. In that second year, for 
the fall semester, you would take directing the short film three, directing actors and seminar and sound. So these are co-requisites to one another. If you choose the directing fiction track in the spring, your courses will look like this. You will be taking seminar in American film, writing the narrative production thesis, the internship, and an advanced elective of your choice. That third and final year would entail the thesis production in the fall, seminar in international film, and an advanced elective. And then in the fall, you would be doing thesis post-production and two advanced electives of your choice within those respective categories. Your final deliverables for this specialization is an eight to 15 minute narrative fiction film, as well as a festival submission plan and promotional materials. For directing nonfiction, your uh, spring semester in that second year, you would take seminar in American film, along with pre-production for documentary thesis, the internship course, and an advanced selective. Um, one thing that I should mention is that the internship course is a zero unit course, which means you are not paying for it. Um, LMU does have different grants and stipend opportunities in the event that you receive or you attain an internship that is not paid or doesn't pay very well. Um, these grants will supplement your income for that. So that's a great resource that we offer. In the third year for directing nonfiction, you would then be taking thesis production, seminar and international film, and advanced elective of your choice. And then in the spring, you are in thesis post-production, and you would take two advanced electives of your choice within those categories. Your final deliverables for this specialization is a completed documentary film, 8 to 20 minutes in length, as well as a festival submission plan and promotional materials. For creative producing, your spring semester in the second year, you would then take developing, selling, and monetizing digital content, producing master class, seminar in American film, and the internship practicum course. Your third and final year for creative producing entails entertainment of business affairs, seminar in international film, and an advanced elective. And then in the spring, your thesis portfolio class, and then two advanced electives of your choice. Your final deliverables for creative producing would entail 25 to 60 minutes of content from your upper level courses um, or thesis projects that you've worked on for writing and producing for television, for example. And other uh, projects are accepted at the committee's discretion, but you must include a minimum of two projects in total. You would also have to do a three page reflection paper on your produced films, complete a project consisting of a Bible pitching material, business marketing strategy, and a pitch presentation for the industry and a lookbook. And don't be discouraged. All of this is uh, taught to you throughout your three years. So you are learning how to develop all these materials, as well as the web series idea composed of either a written treatment or visual and visual pitch or a completed digital POC, and then a riptone reel or visual sales tool for the web series TV show or feature. Now moving along to cinematography, your second year in the spring, you would take seminar in American film, intermediate cinematography, color correction, and the internship practicum. For your third year, the curriculum entails advanced cinematography, seminar in international film, and an advanced elective. And then in the spring, your thesis portfolio class and two advanced electives of your choice. Your final deliverables for this would be a two to four minute cinematography reel, your online portfolio or website, which is also reviewed by the thesis committee, a completed personal marketing package, and 25 to 60 minutes of content from the uh, aforementioned courses. This one must include a minimum of three projects for cinematography. For editing your second year in the spring, you would take seminar in American film, the internship practicum, and a combination of, that would total to six units um, of advanced electives. There are different courses that are offered. I invite you to explore our bulletin to see the different courses that we do have available. Um, it would be six units in total. So we do have courses that range from one to three or four units that you can choose from. So you have the ability to tailor um, which areas you want to have more expertise. In. For that third and final year, you would take advanced editing in the fall, as well as seminar in international film and an advanced selective. In the spring, you would take the thesis portfolio course and editing and finishing the short film. Your deliverables for the editing specialization would be a two to five minute editing reel, online portfolio or website, trailers for the completed films, and 25 to 60 minutes of content from the courses listed here. And this must include a minimum of two projects, along with the post-production schedules, budgets, and workflows for each project. So moving on now to the screenwriting programs, writing for the screen and writing and producing for television. 
your first year in writing for the screen, you would take production fundamentals for screenwriters, elements of feature screenwriting and advanced motion picture script analysis. In the spring, you would take writing the feature screenplay, and then you have the choice between either writing the drama or writing the comedy TV spec series, and then a film, television, and media studies elective of your choice. In the second year for writing for the screen, in the fall, you would take rewriting the feature screenplay, advanced feature screenwriting, and the business of entertainment. In the spring, you would take feature film uh, and television adaptation, rewriting the advanced screenplay, and then you have the choice between the writing elective or writing an original drama or comedy pilot. That third and final year for writing for the screen is the thesis screenplay project course, writing an original drama pilot or a comedy pilot, and a writing elective. A few of the writing electives that we offer are digital storytelling, playwriting or sketch writing, and writing video games, which is a very popular one, and most recently added as well. Then in the spring, you would take rewriting thesis screenplay and the feature film and television portfolio workshop. So your final deliverables for the writing for the screen portfolio, you would leave with three feature length screenplays, one episodic teleplay and one original pilot for television. Moving on now to writing and producing for television, your first year, your first year would entail introduction to television production elements of television writing, and the history of television. In the spring, you have the choice between writing drama, TV series spec, or writing comedy, the feature film screenwriting class, and the TV writer's room. In the fall of your second year, you would take writing an original drama pilot and writing an original comedy pilot. The business of entertainment would be your third class for the fall. And then in the spring, you would move along to planning ahead, which is producing fundamentals, rewriting the TV pilot, either drama or comedy, and an elective of your choice. Your third and final year for writing and producing for television, or WPTV for short, as we call it. In the fall, you would take pre-production for thesis project to screenwriting electives. In the spring, you would take post-production for thesis project and the feature film and television portfolio workshop. So your final deliverables uh, for your portfolio for writing and producing for television would entail five to minute, five to fifteen minute short. Sorry, y'all, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, and then your choice between a proof of concept for a script, a web series pilot, a sizzle reel for a show, or a standalone short. And the portfolio would entail three to five, uh, three to five polished scripts that could include pilots, screenplays, plays, or even sketches. So we host an event um, at the end of your third year for both writing and producing for television and writing for the screen. This is called First Pitch. This is a very, uh, I like to call it like a speed dating roundtable style event where we bring in managers and agents from the industry to come and meet with our students. This is really what your third year focuses on is that refinement and overall polishing of all of your scripts and your portfolio so that you are ready to pitch. Um, we've had success from our alums out of this event. One of my favorites that I love to mention is Evan Romanski. Um, he wrote Nurse, the uh, sequel to Nurse Ratchet. Uh, or, right, Mike? It's like it's a sequel to Nurse Ratchet to the character from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's she's Nest. A, yeah, she's a, yeah, it's just kind of, I think, a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's prequel. Nest. Right. Thank you. Um, so, that is a show on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to. Um, I think it's really good. So, yeah, we had that success come from that as well as many others. We also have an MFA screenwriting directory for where we put both of our um, writing and producing for television and writing for the screen students. We take their headshots. We have your contact information as well as your bio um, and then log lines from three to five projects that are ready to go. Not only do we distribute this digitally to over 400 of our contacts, um, we also distribute it physically. Uh, so it's a nice piece that you get to leave with. Um, yeah. So special events overall that we host throughout, as I mentioned earlier um, on that slide, I did want to also cover Story Rush, which is a really cool, fun event, but serves as an icebreaker and also integration and launching collaboration and community at LMU School of Film and Television. It's where we put, uh, we mix everybody up and throughout all three programs and we put you all um, in your respective groups where you come together, you develop a project the week before your classes begin, uh, typically right after orientation. We also have um, working with partners opportunities uh, where we bring in folks 
from um, external folks from the industry that come in and speak with our students. One-on-one uh, -on -one pitch practice, which happens for our screenwriting students. Um, they get to practice individually with alums. Um, Mike, if you have more to add to that, as well as far as like who else is coming um, to work on, on the pitch practicing uh, with our students, that'd be cool. Um, and then we have crew pitch. So for production, um, what the students do is they write out a summary of what their projects entail and the type of help that they need. So we have these posted uh, through the student production office so that we ensure that all of our students have the help that they need on set. I mentioned mixers earlier. We also offer film craft workshops, um, working with partners, which I already mentioned, um, and then the mentorship program through production. Um, so this is where when we have um, recent students that come in, they have the opportunity to be mentored by second or third year students. And then first pitch, which I just discussed as well. So if you're interested in applying for fall 2024, uh, we currently do not have the deadline release for fall 25, so just stay tuned for that. But if you are interested in applying for fall 24, our deadline, like I mentioned, is November 15th. We have a $50 application fee, and we require your official transcripts from all institutions attended after high school. So a bachelor's degree is required to apply for our MFA programs. We require a personal statement. For production, we ask for visual samples and a portfolio list. So this is not a submission of the media. This is more a listed description of the work that you've done. We also ask for creative written samples. Um, the video recording, this is done directly through our application. You would hit record in the app, and then that is supplemental to your personal statement. I'd like to see it as an opportunity for you to express yourself through a different medium. And then we also ask for a one-page resume, uh, two letters of recommendation, one professional, and one academic. And then for production within the specialization, uh, we ask you to share with us which one you're interested in in your personal statement. And then for our national students, we also ask for course-by-course -course transcript evaluation. Um, please note that this is not a language uh, equivalency translation or evaluation. It is an academic evaluation. So we have to make sure that the degree is accredited and then it fulfills the requirements for a bachelor's degree in the United States. And then lastly, the English language proficiency exam. Um, so we do accept uh, the IELTS, the TOEFL, and then Duolingo as well. Down to the uh, cost of attendance and financial assistance that we offer. So at for the uh, film school, we have 1536 per unit at 60 units for film and television production. This comes out to roughly 92,000. Uh, for writing for the screen and writing and producing for television, this is a 51 unit program which comes out to 78,000. Uh, we do have scholarships. You can apply for our scholarships at the School of Film and Television within the general application. These scholarships are merit-based and they are open to all of our students. We also offer graduate assistantships, not only within the School of Film and Television, but throughout all of LMU. So if you um, are interested in exploring other areas of academia, you are welcome to apply to other positions. Um, these are open to all students at well, as well. They start at $18 an hour for up to 20 hours a week. And then federal loans are also an option for funding your graduate studies. For more information, I encourage you to reach out to the financial aid office. And then the student accounts office, uh, they have payment plans. So that is also another form of assistance as well. And for more information on that, I encourage you to reach out to them. So what comes next? After you submit your application, our decisions will be released within, um, we'd like to release them mid-March, um, but you could hear from us throughout mid-March to early April. Once you're admitted, we do ask for a $500 non-refundable tuition deposit, which is required to secure your spot in the program. So this deposit is applied to your tuition and saves your seat in the program with us. And then for those of you that are not local, um, we like to ask that you plan out at least the last two weeks of August to be present with us in Los Angeles, because we do have a lot of events that we would love to have you present for. Here's my contact information and how you could stay connected with me as well as following us on social media. I offer one-on-one -on -one appointments outside of the graduate open house. You can We give uh, campus tours all year round, so I would love to see your faces. So you can come and check out our facility.
studies. And then if you also are interested in meeting with a current graduate student, we can set that up as well. Towards the second half of this, um, we will be hosting the graduate student panel. So you'll be able to hear from students that are currently in the program um, and we'll get there in just a few moments. Oh, wait. In just a few moments after um, we take questions for the grad directors. So I am gonna stop sharing right now. That way, Gino and Mike, um, if anyone has questions for either of them, please feel free to either unmute yourself or raise your hand. Don't be shy, we're not scary. <laughs> Anyone? Now's your chance. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Alyssa Aguilos. Um, I was just wondering if there were any um expect like grade expectancies in our bachelor's programs or like that um uh, that you would require. Are there any um is it uh, mostly merit based or is it also like personality and creati creativity based, how, mu how much does that weigh into your decisions, do you think? It, it's um, multiple characteristics. I mean, mm -hmm. our, our, our acceptance decisions, uh, certainly your former academic performance is, um, is considered, um, but we're also, we're also looking for, for people who have the potential to tell interesting stories and who have done interesting things in their life and they have sto good stories to tell. Um, we're looking for people who have the experience collaborating with uh, with uh, preferably on film projects or or art projects. We're looking we're looking for people who uh, who represent the some of the values that Loyola Marymount University has been founded on, which include things like so social justice, education in, in the service of others and uh, uh, self-introspection. Um, so it's so there is no one facet that we consider of, above all. We're looking for a, a well-rounded person um, who potentially uh, has stories to tell and uh, is passionate about telling them. Does that help? Thank you so much. Great question. Anyone else? I do see someone unmuted, but I don't want to assume. Yeah, Andre. I have a question. Uh, I'm. I guess I get to know a little bit more about the um the graduate assistantships. Uh, if you can go into a little more detail about that, and I would also like to know how how flexible is the the course schedule? You know, for those of us who are you know working professionals as as well as you know grad students. Well, I'll speak to the production program and Mike can speak to the screenwriting program. And the production program, uh, we consider it to be a full-time program. The uh, uh, the first two semesters, you're taking 12 credits, which is a pretty significant load. Uh, we do uh, sometimes have students who work, but it's difficult to work full-time and, um, and, do, and do well in the program unless you're really good at time management. Um, as to your, as to your, it, it, it's easier to to work as you get further into the program. The first year is the most difficult year, and the um, as to your question about graduate assistantships, uh, our our graduate assistantships, we have graduate assistantships and teaching assistantships. They're essentially part time jobs. I think they pay around uh, eighteen dollars an hour. You can work up to twenty hours a week, and uh, they. Uh, the, some of the graduate assistants are working in things like editing labs or in the camera department. Uh, others are working as teaching assistants, supporting undergraduate classes. For instance, I teach an undergraduate class tonight and I have a, a second year graduate student who's a teaching assistant who uh, assists with that class. Uh, and then there are other opportunities for employment on campus too, outside of SFTV, but we encourage you to, to try to get a, a a part-time job within SF, SFTV. Mike, I mean, do you want to add? Yeah, anything? yeah. Um, same thing in the in both writing programs. They are um, considered full-time. We don't guarantee that you're going to always get night classes. We try to offer some. Um, it is um, it's a three-year program. We're trying to do better in the last year to get more of those to be night classes for um, flexibility there. 
Um, but once again, it, you know, you're in a program, you are, it's not a, um, it's not a part-time program by any means. Um, so even with that, and yeah, we have grad, um, assistance, um, because I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not sure how many people are aware here, but when you get an MFA, it is a terminal degree, uh, which is what you're offered with all of these, which means you could teach on a college level with an MFA. Uh, you don't need to get a PhD. Um, and so for those of you who are, you know, maybe thinking about teaching someday, um, we do have a few uh, graduate assistant jobs and teaching assistant jobs um, that, you know, would be aligned towards that. We have an undergrad class called Art of the Cinema um, that often our students uh, are the TAs for, uh, where you actually get to teach your own little labs uh, with students. So there's 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 those kind of opportunities, you know, we're trying to build so that you can become a teacher as you get out. Um, and then uh, I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Yeah, we can take those. Uh, I, I do see other hands up, but I'll take a couple from the chat first. Uh, so Liz and Pierre, thank you. We'll get to you in just a moment. Uh, all right. So question from David. Are there opportunities for someone on the fiction directing track to take some advanced selectives in other areas such as screenwriting or editing? Uh, everybody takes an editing class their first year. So uh, everybody takes a, a editing fundamentals class your first semester, uh, excuse me, this is the my nightly solicitors. Uh, and, and they take screenwriting too, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they they take screenwriting, and then they're in your in your uh, second and third semester. You're working on films. Students often edit those films. Um, Avid editing is our our primary editing system that we teach. Although we also support Adobe Premiere. Uh, then what was the other part of that question? It was. Uh, Oh yeah, advanced electives. There we there are a couple of screenwriting classes that you can take as an elective. That is, I, is it writing the future, Mike? That that the prize students can take as yeah, an elective. I think so, and I think I'm I'm not sure about pilot classes, but I think there may be an opportunity there. Yeah, there there um, and then you do take you do take a screenwriting fundamentals class your first semester also. Yeah, definitely. and then you're taking screenwriting classes. Actually, you're taking a screenwriting class to write the script for your thesis film too. That's uh, taught by screenwriting instructors. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I can take that second question. Uh, the What level of writing is needed for the screenplay sample for the application? So obviously it's getting more and more competitive these days. And, and a lot of people are more, when I you know applied, it was hard to find anything about how to write a screenplay. <laughs> um, now it's like they teach it in high school, which just blows my mind. Um, but so, you know, obviously, we do take, you know, all applications into consideration. So there, there is, you know, competitive nature to that, but we're not necessarily requiring you to know how to, you know, write before you get here. That's, that's, you know, part of what we're going to teach you hopefully, but we want to see enough of, you know, what you're writing and, and what, where you're at to sort of gauge, you know, how well you'll do in the program as well. So um, it, it doesn't have to be a lot of experience. And we've had people submit plays and other things that we just see, you know, some promise there. Um, and we can teach you guys the format. So we're also not looking at them for like, you know, is this properly formatted or any of that? Um, we really just want to see uh, uh, the storytelling um, that you're bringing to it. Um, and then there was a follow up, I think, right after that, that uh, why are we different than other screenwriting programs? And I will 100% uh, say this. We're a three year program which is unique for screenwriting, especially. Um, uh, but the reason we have a third year, and also I feel like we're fairly competitive money-wise because that money that um, you know, I was talking about is spread over three years and not just two. Um, I think we're cheaper than USC with all three years um, and they do too. Um, but the third year is what we call the launch year. So we really spend time getting you prepared to, to go out in the business. And one of the big parts of that is rewriting. So we have a lot more rewriting classes, I think, than most writing programs, because if you only have two years, you're trying to crank out as many scripts as possible, but you're not really spending the time in really making sure they're um, ready. And in our in our final semester for both writing programs, uh, we have a portfolio class where we go over your scripts that some of them have already been rewritten. And then we're even fine tuning them more uh, because we want you to leave here with at least two to three solid scripts that you can go to managers and agents with and, 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 you know, start your career. So that is really uh, the difference with us, I think, is that third year and, and the emphasis on rewriting. Thank you, Mike. Liz, 
you've been very patient. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um. So I was a few minutes late in the beginning. I, so I apologize if you covered this, but I want to know how physical is the writing programs as far as the, I don't know if um, the 692 is a physical production. Um, and if you, if so, if you have accommodations for that. For the television writing program? Yes. Or, yeah. So um, what we're trying to teach you to do is be a, a showrunner for the writing and producing for television. So we're not teaching you a ton of the physical work. Um, so we've had people that, you know, are, uh, have some disabilities where we, we work with that um, because really what we want you to learn is how to oversee production right so um, it you know it depends some people get super involved and, and some of our students do want to direct their projects we don't recommend that we want you to actually bring on a director either from the other program or even an outside director that you may know from undergrad or wherever um, because we want you to learn how to work with a director and get your vision out. So, um, I mean, production is, you know, a fairly physical thing and to oversee it, sometimes you do have to get there. But, um, for the most part, I think in the WPTV program, you could, um, you'd have more flexibility than if you were actually trying to shoot your own film. Uh, Pierre has also been very patiently waiting here. Pierre. <laughs> Hello. Thank you guys for um, this information session. My name is Pierre Philippe. Hi. Um, I had two quick questions, actually, um, to you guys. I wrote them down. Um, you guys had mentioned multiple opportunities to work within uh, people or with people in the industry through like the school and internships aside or things like that. Um, but I wanted to know, were there opportunities to work in the industry outside of the school or would everything primarily be happening within? If that well, if you, your internship is then outside of the school. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, we don't assign you to an in internship, but we help you identify internships and we, we work with our Office of Career and Professional Development and they help you develop materials that will help you get that internship as well as help you to find internship opportunities. Okay. Does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. And then I had one other quick question. Um, I know for the undergrad campus, um, it is very... Um, at least specified that Loyola is a Jesuit school. And I want to know what um, that kind of entailed or what, <laughs> kind of a broad question. I don't know what, I know like other- Yeah, I, 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 I think I know where you're coming from there. Uh, you can be <laughs> as Catholic or not Catholic as you want to be. Uh, uh, the um, the fact awesome. that- <laughs> Thank you. Jesuit school, school um, means that we are grounded in certain principles, like principles that I was talking about, uh, which are actually, I, I think, very healthy principles. Uh, but it does not, the, there is no religion in the classroom. There is no censorship of the kind of projects that you can work work on. And anyone of any de denomination or non-denomination is welcome on campus. Yeah. yeah. I, well, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was just going to say the story I love to tell about this is I went to a Jesuit school undergrad. My parents went there in the 50s and my mom had a religion teacher who was a pronounced atheist. So that's what the Jesuits are about. They like <laughs> they are not afraid of people that disagree with them and they're very open to a lot of ideas. And they, that's kind of what they're all about, especially in an educational setting. So, um, yeah, there's absolutely no censorship on what you can write about. I know there's concerns about that. Um, so yeah, they are sort of the, the renegades of the Catholic church. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But, you know, the, the converse of that is also that, you know, we do have a chapel on campus. We do, we do have weekly mass. And as I said, you could be as Catholic as you want to be, or yep. as not Catholic as you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to add to that, that our cohorts, um, I mean, especially at SFTV, they com they are comprised of intersectional identities. We're very proud of that. So that's what I think we're rooted in in our mission is amplifying the voices of the unheard and really giving folks a platform to, you know, further expand on that. So we want to empower our students, um, regardless of how they identify. Um, in addition to having our chapels on campus, we also have Muslim and Jewish student organizations. Our dining halls also reflect that community where we have halal options, kosher options, uh, vegan and gluten-free. You know, we encompass all different um, types of areas to really make sure that our students feel welcome on campus. Awesome. Okay. I have another question that we'd like to get to in the chat. Um, 
Does LMU offer graduate fellowships as well? Mike and Gino, can either of you take the fellowship? Uh, if by a fellowship you mean a a teaching position that that allows full tuition remission and a stipend, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, that's typically what how a fellowship is defined. We do not offer that. Um, we have the graduate assistantships, and then we we do have a few. Um, uh, pretty good scholarships that are merit based, but yeah. um, we do not have a fellowship per se. There is a just so you know there there's a um like a test what do you call it like beta test or whatever of um a program to help uh, some of our writing students teach um, the undergrad writing classes while they're actual students here in their grad program. Um, but right now we only have one student doing that, and I think it's it's like we're checking out if that can work and and if it can be juggled well with um with the studies uh so that, that's a kind of a launch program right now it's not but maybe by the time you guys are in here and and in your second or third year we may have more opportunities there uh kennedy mallory had her hand up kennedy do you have a question kennedy not hi i'm so sorry uh well one thank you for hosting this has been very informational I do have a question in regards to the application itself. I know when I was looking at it, it goes over like the like scholarship consideration portion. And I know, I believe they asked, I'm not sure what the question verbatim, but asking if the applicant has applied to FAFSA. And I believe the deadline has been delayed to December and the deadline is next Wednesday. So in regards to answering that question, would that be based off of previous applications or if you're planning on applying for FAFSA? Hopefully that question makes sense. Yeah, yeah. can you take that? <laughs> yes. Um, so your question in regards to the FAFSA application, um, even though the deadline is in December for that, um, if you are able to give us the information for what you submitted previously, we will accept that. Um, but we review and like I allocate review applications throughout December. So you're it wouldn't be considered late when you submit that. Does that make sense? Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, I hope that gives you like a feeling of comfort <laughs> that we'll, yeah, we, we get that information from the financial aid office when we're... Um, finalizing our decisions. And then um, I'm going to include the link to our uh, ONIF office. We have fellowships that are um, in partnership with LMU. So please do explore that for those of you that are interested. Um, let's see, we have more questions in the chat. Oh, graduate housing. Yes. So we do not have on-campus graduate housing necessarily. We have partnerships. So we have the LMU graduate house. This is a house at the foot of the main campus in Westchester. Um, there are single and double occupancy spaces. They're fully furnished. And then we also have the, um, Playa de Loro partnership. That's an apartment complex. It's off of, um, Lincoln Boulevard. It's about 10 to 15 minutes from campus. Um, that's also single double occupancy two bedroom apartments, fully furnished. They have a fitness facility on site as well as um, spa and then gated parking. We have a number of SFTV students um, that live there and uh, hang out all the time. I think it's really amazing because <laughs> they spend so much time together in class and then they hang out um, back at home. But it's yeah, it's a, it's a big community. So we do offer um, those options. Uh, I'll include the link in the chat so that you can explore the different price ranges for that. Um, depending on whether or not you opt into the meal plans, um, that determines the cost overall. And let's see. Is it true that there will be a joint business and film program in the future? Um, yes. So that is our marketing uh, entertainment leadership management program that is not launched yet. Um, so if you are uh, receiving our emails now, you will receive an email regarding that program uh, that'll be sent out to everyone that has an interest with an SFTV. Um, so just stay tuned for more information on that. Thank you for asking. All right. Do we have any other questions? I hope that's everyone in the, in the chat. If I haven't missed anybody. I think any was there something? Shoot. 
Oh yeah, would LMU consider supporting the production of major release film productions to help students launch careers even before completing MFA and promote LMU? Do you want to take that one, Waco? Do you? I mean, sorry, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do not. Uh, the The MFA uh, thesis film is a short film. Um, you know, our, our thesis film is uh, generally 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, we do not have students uh, produce or direct a feature film. Um, that's, uh, given the, the number of students we have, that would become untenable. Yeah, it's a logistic issue, right? More than anything. Yes. Yeah. Anyone else? Any TV writers out there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a couple of raised hands. It's an it's a whole new world. Okay. All right. Well, we do have the directors for a few more minutes before we start the graduate student panel. So I just want to make sure that we don't have any unanswered questions. I do believe that's everyone in the chat. Okay, Gino and Mike, um, before you leave us, why don't we tell everyone why they should come to LMU? <laughs> because we're fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, actually, we I, I'm often asked the question, what differentiates us from uh, some of our major competition in the area, such as USC, UCLA, Chapman, et cetera. Um, and I, I, I think the answer to that is uh, a couple of fold. One is that we emphasize what we call healthy competition rather than cutthroat competition. Uh, and part of that is a high degree of collaboration where we are, you know, this is a hugely collaborative industry. And so we, we attempt to um, graduate students who are willing to, to step into that extremely collaborative environment. And then another thing that differentiates our production program uh, from some of our competitors is that everybody uh, makes a film. Uh, actually, everybody makes a couple of films. And, um, and you don't have to declare a specialization to your third semester. So you have a year to explore, uh, to try to find your strengths, weaknesses, likes, and dislikes before you actually have to declare a specialization um, in one of those five areas that Fionnet uh, enumerated. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I second everything Gino said, especially about collaboration. When I went out to work in the business after I did graduate with my MFA from LMU, I was told that we had a rep of being the nice film school. And I, I like that. Um, but also collaborative um, is huge. And um, in the two writing programs, we're big on that. Um, you know, as a screenwriter, you can be a little bit more of a hermit. Sometimes we get people in that program that, are, you know, want to just write and don't want to get too involved in production. And and you can do that. It's a little harder, though, these days. And we do teach you, though, how to pitch and how to get yourself out there because you still need to self-promote. But in the writing and producing for television program, 100%, we um, push collaboration. We push working well with others because that is how you make it as a television writer. You'll be in writer's rooms, sometimes people you don't like, <laughs> but you need to learn how to get together and, and write that show and make that happen. And so we really, um, you know, almost all our writing classes um, are small. Uh, eight is usually the top for a grad uh, writing class. Um, and and everybody gives each other notes everybody reads each other's stuff like every you know we work it as a writer's room um we also have usually in almost all those classes we have somebody taking the notes we make sure you know because that is a skill you're going to want especially if you want to become a television writer one of the ways to get into the business as i did is become an assistant for those writers and uh learning how to like take good notes and pay attention to what's going on and and keep track of the story for them is an invaluable asset as well. Um, where I, I can recommend students we've had in the program directly to a writer's uh, assistant job, where usually they want you to be a writer's PA first and all of that. But I tell them, hey, they've had three years of experience in writer's firms because that's what all our classes are set up as. So um, so yeah, we um, 
do that. And and the last thing I'll say about the writing uh, for television program, this writer strike, the one of the big things that came out of it, and we did have some headway, was was really pushing to put back the system that I was, you know, lucky enough to be part of, which was writing on a TV show that shot 22 episodes where I was able to be on set. I was able to be in post. I was able to be in the production and the prep meetings. Um, and I really learned how to produce a television show as well as just write it. Um, that's been going away and that they're trying to bring that back with these smaller writer rooms, these um, pre-production writers rooms for shows. But what we can offer you at LMU is we teach you some of that so that if you don't get it in your career, you'll be ready, a little more ready as a as a showrunner um, if you went to LMU's program, because we're going to at least try to give you a lot of those tools of like knowing what everybody does on set and how to oversee them and how to manage that. So that's another a push. Um, we're, we're one of the rare ones with the TV writing program that has the production part of it in there um, and producing. All right. Thank you, guys. All cool. right. Um, well, I do have one more question in the chat, but it does pertain to the application. So I, I will answer this very quickly. Um, so this is regarding the video recording. Uh, does it require the introduction and your goals? Then what is the difference between this and the personal statement? Yeah, so I did mention earlier, this is like supplemental to your personal statement. It does allow you to express yourself through the video medium. Um, so you would just share, you know, why LMU and um, maybe a little bit about you as well. Uh, there's, there may be a couple prompts in there, but that's the gist of it. Um, we definitely want to, you know, get a sense of your passion and enthusiasm um, for the program and get to know you a little bit better as well. So I hope that answers your question. Of course. All right. So Mike and Gino, I release you. We are going to um, move into the graduate student panel um, for our current students that are here. If you could just raise your hand, I'll be pinning you on the screen. Um, but any final words, Mike and Gino? Well, thank you all for, for uh, attending this session. And we look forward to reviewing your applications. Yes, I'm excited to see uh, the applications you guys submit. And, um, and I'm excited to see some of our grads here to help sell the program as well. <laughs> All right. All righty. Bye, everybody. Have Thanks a good day. Bye. All right. Before we jump into the grad panel, as you all have been very patiently waiting, I did want to mention um, that after our session is over, the financial aid office and the career professional development office will be hosting their own sessions afterward. And then on Wednesday, the international admission session will be from 7 to 7.30 um, tomorrow, because today is Tuesday. <laughs> um, all right. So thank you all for raising your hands. I'm going to pin you in just a moment. Let's see, we are, I'm so happy you're all here. Thank you for being here. We've got students ranging from first and third years. So many familiar faces, so many new faces. All right, let me unpin myself. Thanks for taking the time out of your very busy fall semester. I know it's wild for y'all right now. Oh no, Tucker, I can't add you. Why? Oh, I didn't. I just assumed we were supposed to raise our hands. I don't know what, what was going on. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I could pull you all out of the main group so that I can oh. see you on the screen for everyone, but there seems to be a limit of nine. So Tucker. Okay. And yeah. Um, maybe I'll, I'll switch you out. We'll figure it out. But um, okay, <laughs> but thank you all for being here. Seriously, I really appreciate um, all of our SFTV grad students who took time to be present today. Um, I am going to start out with a very simple request. Um, you all can take turns, you can popcorn one another. I'd like to know your name, what year you are in the program and what program you're in, and then tell us why LMU. Um, I guess I can go first. Um, so hi everybody. I'm Bree. I'm a second year prod student. Um, okay, I have the memory of a goldfish. I'm sorry, Yannette. What was the other question? That's okay. Um, why LMU? What what oh, what you to come here? How honest can I be? As honest as you as you need. Okay. To be. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I will say like in general, I wanted to be at three schools. I had researched obviously like USC, LMU and UCLA and I was equally interested in all three. And so like there were things that I liked about each program. So it wasn't really like I wanted to go to one over the other. I mean, at one point, I would say that maybe I wanted to go to SC over LMU only because I'm into producing. And so like being at LMU, you have to have a three year program. But for the Peter Stark producing program specifically, it was only two years. So I'm like, yeah, less school. But I didn't get accepted into SC and I got accepted into LMU. So I'm here and I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's definitely like a great option. Um, like I was a Gina who said that we have a reputation for like being nice. And like, we really like, everybody is so nice, like in my program and I work really well with everyone. So I'm definitely thankful for SC's rejection. Um, Cause then I wouldn't have met all these beautiful people. Thank you, Brie. Great, great turnaround. Uh, let's move to uh, Cara. I hope I'm saying it correctly. It's Cara Lange. Um, <laughs> I'm Cara. I'm a third year WPTV. Um, and I chose LMU specifically because they had a writing and producing for television program. I did actually get into USC in their writing for screen program. I opted for LMU because I wanted television specifically. And this program is allowing me to write so many pilots and kind of branch out and learn more about who I am as a writer. So I'm super excited that I chose LMU. And I think we should tag Camille next because she's my... She's in my cohort and we're super tight. Yeah, go for it. Oh, did you call on somebody? Oh, only verbally. I said we should talk oh, okay. next. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, let's have Jamaria. <laughs> hey everyone my name is Jamaria Mason Price I am a first year writing for the screen so I'm gonna be a little honest y'all I always know I want to come to LA to do writing I didn't necessarily know what school but I know I was coming to LA without a doubt I'm from South Carolina the country I was ready to be a city girl in the city so I started researching like top 10 schools in LA came up and after that, well, LMU came up. So I said, okay. I started really doing some research, really expanding, really looking. And I fell in love. And after that, I applied. And I didn't have that much experience. So I was praying to the heavens. And then I got in. Because, you know, NYU rejected me. But it's okay because we're here. So, so that's about it. Now, if I got the popcorn, y'all already know I'm going to popcorn it to Emma. Hi, my name is Emma. Um, I met Jamaria our very first day of orientation. I met as well a first year writing for the screen student. Um, I chose LMU is that I had like, was really kind of lost after I, during COVID and all of that. And after like, you know, undergrad, all of these job offers were all of a sudden gone. And I talked to several people who had gone to Chapman, USC, UCLA got their own MFA stuff. And they said that like, in terms of just growth opportunity, and also, you know, to be completely honest, just financial help, LMU was where to go. And it was, it made sense. I did my research. You always do your research, of course. Um, I was given a private tour here by, you know, uh, Patty, who was amazing. And it was very clear. This was a very personable school. And so, yeah, here I am. Um, and if I have to popcorn it to someone, it's definitely going to be Romeo. Hi, everyone. My name is Romeo Todd. Um, I am a first year at SFTV. I am originally from Cameroon, Africa, been in America since 2008. Um, the reason why I chose on you. LMU was definitely my top schools for sure. Um, I got accepted into a lot of other schools and I did the same thing. I did top 10 schools in LA because I was out of passion going to LA and choosing LMU has been one of the best decisions I made. Everyone is super sweet, kind, and I just love it here. I'm gonna pass it down to Hannah. 
That's so real of you. I know when you said you're so, everyone's so sweet and kind. You're talking about me, your favorite TA of all time, uh, for sure. But hi, I'm Hannah Butler. I am a second year writing and producing for television student. I, when I was looking at schools, I'm originally from the Midwest and during COVID kind of similar to what Eva said, I was like, you know, I've always wanted to do this writing thing. I don't know how, like I do that. I don't know how I figure that out. Um, so I looked at grad schools and I applied to LMU was um, one of my choices. And the other one was Texas. I was like, you know, if I don't get in, it's not meant to be. Um, I thankfully got into LMU um, and then it was a fun full circle moment because LMU offered scholarships to go to Austin Film Festival this year. So I got to get a taste of Austin and LA is way better. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even popcorn it. Um, okay. Who still needs to go? Um, Got Dan, Jordan. I'll, you know, I'll popcorn it to Tucker. Okay. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Tucker. Um, second year graduate student um, in film production, doing the directing narrative track. Um, directing narrative directing fiction. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I think uh, LMU for me, um, it was either LA, New York were, were kind of the two cities I wanted to be in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from the Bay Area, so it was nice to kind of stay a little closer to home. Um, but yeah, I think I was just really attracted to the fact that, um, yeah, LMU just seemed very like straightforward and genuine um, kind of in the the application process and I was doing my research, um, you know, doesn't have the you know, maybe pretentious reputation at USC might. Um, so I, I just really thought it was a cool down to earth place and um, seemed like a lot of really lovely, nice people um, and uh, a lot of cool gear. So that's kind of what brought me here. Thank you, Tucker. Um, oh, you I'll, um, yeah, I'll pass it on to Dan. Thanks, Tucker. Hi, everyone. My name's Dan. I'm a third year production student in the grad program. And I would say one great thing about LMU is the facilities here are state of the art. Equipment's really advanced. And one of my personal favorite things to do is to is to record in the um, ADR booth that we have here at the Playa Vista campus. Um, we have two of them, I think. And it's sorry, I think I just made someone yawn. Yeah. And it, it's um oh, it's great right. for it's great for foley and doing automated dialogue replacement so it's almost like professional sounding yes dan is a editing specialization student i think i should have also asked if you were a production which specialization <laughs> track you were but we can we can get back to that um who else are we missing uh connor do you want to go ahead yeah, I wasn't yawning because of Dan. I know he knows that, but yeah, I wasn't yawning because of Dan. I was, I shot today, so I was up and I was up way earlier than I needed to be. But um, yeah, I'm Connor. I'm a first year, Connor Wilson. I'm a first year uh, writing and producing for television student. Um, yeah, I can talk about why I chose LMU because, so I went to LMU undergrad as well. I was screenwriting. And when I, in part because I was going to school doing, you know, I had, it was interrupted by COVID and the strikes and everything. And also because of the nature of screenwriting as a program, I wanted to get more experience on other sides of it, have more ability to build some of these connections and learn more really, because I honestly felt like there was still a lot I needed to learn. I think normally an undergraduate education might have done that, but it was just a, a weird, you know, a weird class. But um, LMU, the, there's a, you know, LMU really was the first choice in a lot of ways. It was, I applied to a couple of other programs, but, you know, I didn't apply to USC. I didn't, I mean, I didn't want to go to USC ever, but uh, I didn't apply to USC. I didn't apply to UCLA. I applied to LMU. Um, and I don't really think there's a program that I'm aware of that's particularly like the WPTV program. I think it's a pretty unique program if you, you know, if, especially if you want to go into that, into the field of television, I think it gives you an education that you're just not really going to get other places. And I think LMU, you know, I can say this both 
graduate and undergraduate is a genuinely collaborative uh envi it's a genuinely collaborative environment and i think that that's going to be one of the most important aspects is that you don't you aren't in like competition with other people you're actually working with other people to achieve the goals and i think that's important because of the whole you know the rising tide raises all ships and i think it teaches you that very early on and I'll send it to Jordan. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm also a WPTVer. Um, Romeo and Connor are in my and Hannah's above us, but Romeo and Connor are in my like cohort. Um, the reason that I chose LMU, so I I literally I swore I swore I wasn't gonna go to grad school for for film. Um, a lot of people, you'll hear this a lot. You probably already hear it as artists, but people are like, you don't have to go get your education for the arts, even though it's something that needs to be studied and perfected. Um, and so I said to myself, I was like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I remember I stood up in front of a career development class and I told all of my classmates that I wasn't going to do it. Um, but then something happened in like my fa like fall of last year where I was like, I really want to be a writer. Like, I really want to be a writer and I want to produce my writing. Um, and I was talking to a professor of mine um, and she recommended LMU. She had nothing but the best to say about the school. Um, and so I was automatically smitten. Like I went and luckily uh, when she told me like that same week, it was an open house, literally like a year ago around this time. And I was like, ah, I gotta sign up. I gotta get on here. Um, which is crazy because like, anyways, anyways. Um, and so I, I met everybody. I met Yannette and Mike um, and I just talked to everybody and I fell in love because LMU, well, what they were telling me was LMU was really collaborative. I can say 100% LMU is like collaborative and people care and you get that. Um, and I definitely feel, and I like came from a film school in my undergrad and it can get very competitive. Like, and and I get that because that's the that's the business, it's the industry. But here at LMU, they really pride your education and learning. That's the most important thing. You're here to learn. You're here to become the artist you want to be. You're here to become a better writer. You're here to become a better producer. Um, and you can't do that if you are not leaning on your classmates. That's something that I really really wanted because I know like I I'm I'm an anxiety girl you know what I mean like I, I I'm not gonna be the type of person to like step out there and like like put myself out there if I don't feel like I'm supported and here I can honestly say across the cohorts there's support uh all across the board and I feel like LMU really like that's something that this school has that I don't think a lot of the other schools in the area I don't think a lot of the other schools in the area can say um and I know I'm a little biased but I love LMU and I'm a happy WPTV here. Yeah. And we're happy you're here, Jordan. Um, uh, Nana, or Nana, sorry. Hi, I'm Nana Kamanto. Um, I'm third year in the writing for the screen um, track from Japan. And yeah, just like everyone else was saying, I chose LMU because it is so collaborative. Like even, like you see that in production, but even like, within writing for the screen like if there's an opportunity like people will share it and not just like hoard it to themselves um which I think is really nice and I chose this program specifically because I don't know like I feel like I'm really good at starting things but I never finish them and then I like leave them in a corner and don't look at it ever but I felt like LMU had like a really strong emphasis on rewriting and so much of writing is rewriting anyway so I felt like for me, I really wanted to get that skill um, during my time here. Um, and yeah, I feel like I am getting better at it. It's rewriting isn't just like minor tweaks, it's just like, you know, whole like structural changes, um, which I haven't had to like force myself through that much. So it's nice that the program is making me do that. Um, and yeah, I think that it is like a very friendly environment. Um, I'm so glad that I came. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Um, at this point, I'd like to open up the floor to questions from our guests. Um, if there aren't any, I do have a couple, um, but I definitely, I hope that you all have 
questions brewing. These are current students. And as you have heard, they are going to be very candid and honest with you. Um, so please ask away. Uh, you can put it on the, in the chat or you can raise your hand, whatever you'd like to do. Got a question in the chat. Uh, can you tell us about student slash industry mixers? Yeah. Why don't uh, you all share with us your experience in this? I can kind of speak to that. Um, as I kind of mentioned in mine, one of the opportunities LMU had was going to the Austin Film Festival um, for writing scholarships so we could get like the festival badges and we paid for our own travel. But as part of the weekend down there, LMU brought a ton of their alums that are in the industry and working right now. Um, they brought them into a closed mixer just for LMU students and faculty. So we got to chance the chance to talk to writers who've worked on The Bear, who have graduated from LMU and tons of top shows. So like that was a really invaluable experience. And just getting to like connect with people in a one-on-one, -on -one, very like authentic setting as opposed to like the you go to a career fair or something and that it's very like kind of stilted and awkward. Um Another really great opportunity I loved was I'm in the SFTV Women's Society. And last year they hosted an event with several like um, LMU alums who came in to talk to us about what the industry is like, talk very candidly with us um, and build some connections that way. So I've, I've been super impressed by the way they've kind of um, allowed us to make connections with alumni. Thank you, Hannah. Any other grads want to take that as well? Yeah, um, I I think Hannah articulated a lot of this, the student and industry mixers pretty well. Um, I will say it's just something to add for this year. Um, LMU and specifically Mike Daly, our WPTD grad program director, organized several like outings on strike. So we got to actually participate in the picket lines, um, meet people there and really like talk to people in the industry about what was going on with the strike. So we had a really well-rounded um, exposure to what it will actually mean to be in the guild in the future, um, how the collaborative nature that we have here at LMU is completely out there in the industry. It is there and it is absolutely 100% like visible um, and real in the WGA and how they support each other and just getting to go out and participate in the strikes and get to meet people like I met Brett Goldstein you guys I met Jason Sudeikis on strike with LMU students it was fantastic that is super cool I'm really jealous <laughs> um if I could just add um to speak for the writing for the screen program I am Waco Lynn's grad assistant at the moment and as someone who's like currently trying to like help him put together a lot of these different functions for and outings and events for all th three years of the Writing for the Screen program. Um, even the things that we don't have yet are coming. And it's really cool that you guys are coming in now because by the time you're here, um, hopefully they will all be in motion with panels, with more exposure. Um, even just, you know, working with other companies to learn more about just you know, I know it's no one wants to talk about it or, you know, it's thought of as like a bad thing right now, but like how we can use AI to our advantage. So it's not to the advantage of like studios and whatnot. And just so, you know, it's here, it's happening. How can we adapt kind of situation? He's really great about making and honestly, like a big thing for Waco since he's new is just learning like what the students want at the moment. So I brought up that students would love to learn, um, you know, more about each other across all three first years in production and WPTV. And we're trying to make that happen. And I think that that's a really cool thing. So in addition to all the events we are having right now, he is trying to make so much more happen for us. Um, I also have, so this is actually something, this is an event I attended when I was in my senior year of undergrad, but I, I, I met somebody there who actually is now is currently in and at the time was in the production grad program. So it was something that was open to grad students as well. Uh, and I mainly say this just because it was kind of a interesting little weird. And this is basically me talking about meeting a famous person. So I apologize. But um, so I went to a screening of the film Living. Uh, which I don't know if anyone else saw that. It's a fantastic film and everyone should see it. Um, but 
it was it was in this very nice hotel also which was very strange but i afterwards i got to talk for a while with the screenwriter kazuo shigura and that was very cool on several levels uh he was very personable and it was really impressive to me how much of his time he was giving to us and it was also funny because so this was shortly before the strike and he's never worked in television because he sort of went from the world of novels and literary writing right into start writing screenplays for film i think he said he's written a he's like written a script for a miniseries but he's never worked in television so he didn't understand how it worked at all so he was like asking me about like so what is what's the deal with residuals and stuff like that and I was like explain I was like having and I it was just very strange to me it was a little surreal of like you have a Nobel Prize why am I explaining residuals to you right now so I did just want to talk about that because that was a very strange surreal fruitful experience that happened kind of directly because of LMU. Thank you Connor uh, we would, do want to take another question uh, maybe Devin Yes. Hi. Hello. So I'd like to know what was the, while applying for LMU, what was the trickiest segments of the application for, for you? Well, lots of faces. What do these faces mean? What are they saying? That's <laughs> your personal statement is the oh. most critical thing, Devin. Mm -hmm. um your writing sample is showing what your potential is and how we can like how the program can teach you to hone that and be better um but they want to know who you are so your personal statement i think is the most important part of your application make sure that it says everything about how wonderful you are make sure it shows off you know what you feel like you can bring to the program and make sure it shows off like how you would fit into the program, but like above all, be wonderfully, perfectly you in that personal statement and take a lot of care with it. Yeah, thank you. I personally don't fully remember the application. Um, so I'm like of no help there, but what I will say is that I think you should pay a lot of attention to your recommendations because I know that a lot of people, like when they want recommendations, like whoever their mentor is or whatever person is typically doesn't have the time. So they'll be like, oh, you write it and then I'll go over it and sign off. I would try your absolute best to avoid that because the admissions team can tell if you wrote it versus if somebody who actually is over, who is your mentor, like if they wrote it. Multiple admissions people have told me that they know that they mentor have just signed off on it. So I would say like really pay attention to that because them knowing the difference between that also like makes your application stand out. Lastly, let me, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Me personally, it had to be my works. Cause you know, I just realized I wanted to do this writing thing. I always had it in me, but you know how you just realize you want to do something after taking like a gap year off from undergrad to go to grad school. So it was like, dang, when am I going to have time? Like I'm a teacher. So I would used to be in there just typing away, typing away, typing away. It was the work for me. Like, let me make sure this sound good. This look good. This edit it good. I don't know too much about this. I think I did drama queen before I upgraded to big girl status to final draft. So it was always for me, my writing, but please, I'm like what um, Carr said, your personal statement, gas yourself up. If nobody else go do what you gonna do, it. please gas yourself up. Another thing that people take for granted, listen, when I was in that open house, I was asking them questions. And then I literally, I sent the email. I was like, I need to stop this man, Mike. And I was in a, I was in a meeting with him the same week. You need FaceTime, FaceTime, FaceTime. People love, I, me and Yannette, we were in them emails right here. <laughs> like we, people, when they see your name, cause when they see the application, when they see Devin, they'll be like, oh, Devin Simpson. Oh, I remember him. Oh yeah, he was. Listen, it goes a long way. People want to know that you're personable and like Jamaria and like everybody else was saying, like, like personality, like all of, wait, Jamaria didn't say that. Anyways, but like everybody else was saying like personality, <laughs> it goes a long way. I mean, I basically said that. <laughs> you did, you did, you did, my bad girl. Yes, she did. I, 
I would echo too, to what everybody else has said. Um, as you're prepping your application, make sure you just like bank time to work on it. Um, I know for me, like the hardest part was writing my, um, for the WPTV, you'll write like a pilot uh, as part of your application. And that was my first time, like I love prose writing, but I never, I'd always wanted to be a screenwriter. My undergrad didn't have the program. So I had to like teach myself how to screenwrite and then try and write a pilot. And like, that's not something you can do fast. That takes a hot minute. So take time, prep for it. Um, even if it's just a little bit every day, make sure you're like keeping on track of those deadlines because if you go into it not having screenwriting experience, but you obviously put a lot of work into it, that's going to reflect so much better than if you have screenwriting experience and you just try and throw something together at the last minute. Um, you want to like put your best self forward, put your best foot forward. As Jordan said, gas yourself up. <laughs> Wait, Devin, may I ask what track you're interested in applying for? It's writing for the screen. Oh, okay. Ah, that's mm -hmm. the track. Okay, yeah, I can't speak to that. All right. I, I will say that <laughs> to what Hannah was saying of even if you do have works that are, you know, if you have works like maybe that you've, I don't know what classes you took undergrad. I don't know where you're coming from. Like if you took film classes undergrad and so you wrote things in those classes, like give it another look before you just attach it. Even if you're pretty confident it was good, there's going to be a little, there's going to be some rewriting that you can do before you submit it. Like I, I know I'd, had most of the materials but I rewrote them before I submitted it for my application. oh yeah there is one material that I wrote when I was in high school and yeah we write that I rewrote I rewrote the hell out of it great yeah awesome thank you all so much uh Pierre Philippe hi everyone y'all are so cool um I have a quick question regarding the internship process I wanted to know like how that kind of was like working with the career center and like, was it like cool? Like, were they, I assume they were nice, hopefully, but like how effective, I guess, was it in terms of actually I mean, accomplishing the goal? Yeah, I can catch that because as a third year, I've had, I'm on my fifth internship in the program. Uh, while in the program, although I took, uh, not necessarily I took the summer off, but because of the strikes, there were um, not as many opportunities. Um, but I've really felt like the career and professional development um, program has been really helpful um, because they'll go soup to nuts with you. They'll work with you on your resume and how you can sort of pitch skills that you've picked up in any job to why it will be helpful for an internship. Um, they'll help you with formatting. They'll help you with your cover letter writing. They help you with interview process. So again, able to take what you've worked on with your resume and your cover letters and help you like translate that into interviewing well and putting, a, you know, basically putting your best foot forward. And as Jamaria said, get yourself up, but in a way that is professional um, because it really is super important when you're doing your internship interviews and applications to not only like highlight what they can teach you, but also what you can bring to them. Um, and in, you know, in this industry, especially if you're looking at development internship, what program are you interested in specifically? The creative producing specifically. Creative producing. So you're going to be looking at like a lot of development type internships a lot of lot on the pre-production and production side of things and maybe less on post-production. So it's going to be less about your technical acumen because they'll teach you Airtable, they'll teach you IMDb Pro, they'll teach you all those things. Um, and more about, you know, what is your story analysis like? How, you know, how are you going to interact with people? How have you shown leadership? And the career and professional development team will really help you with your brand, with your narrative. Um, which is how you're going to get those internships. And when you get the first one, it makes getting the second one easier. It's still fine. I still get a hell of a lot more no's than I get yeses. Um, but as I said, I'm on my fifth. Um, and I probably, for those five yeses, probably had, you know, 20 to 30 no's every semester. Um, but I have always felt so comfortable going to career and professional development for help. Even now, like as I'm looking at another round of interviews, I'm there with the people there and getting getting that assistance. Okay, Slay, thank you. 
Yeah, and then I want to add to that since you're interested in creative producing because that's the track that I'm in. Um, they will do for you what you do for yourself. So if you're showing up, and if you're taking initiative to like make your appointments with them, letting them know what your goals are, what you want to do, et cetera, et cetera, then they're going to meet you exactly where you are. Um, I am not as cool as Kara, clearly, because I am not on my fifth internship, but I have had two, and I am currently applying this semester. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be on my third. But um, my first internship that I had was strictly from me reaching out to production companies. It wasn't even anything that was listed uh, through Handshake or like even on their website, the production company I was interested in. So something that you can do is like your favorite TV shows, look to see like who's producing the, those shows and like where it's coming from. And like, I was really into like Insecure and like the best man years and like there's a showrunner who I just absolutely just loved and I'm like oh wow like she has a production company let me see if they have an internship program they didn't but like when I emailed them they were like oh yeah like you sound passionate you sound this like we would love to like bring you on board and teach you and which opened up the door for me to be able to have an internship at Hello Sunshine and who knows what internship is gonna open up from that right so my biggest thing to you especially like what Kara was saying like a lot of stuff that would be that we're applying for is development stuff. So just making sure like when those info sessions happen, because they have info sessions like with Paramount, Disney, like, et cetera, like with these recruiters, take it upon yourself to meet the recruiters and to make sure that you have that personal relationship like with your counselor to, you know, just it's, con it's constant footwork of putting yourself out there so that your name isn't forgotten and that your face isn't forgotten. Thank you. Great advice. Thank you all. Um, before we go to Thomas, I did want to take uh, another question from the chat very quickly. Um, so this question is open, I'm, I'm assuming primarily to film and television production students, um, but all can answer. Uh, so how are you grad students affording your studies? Uh, the concern is about affordability and financial aid. And I do want to recap very quickly. We do offer scholarships at the School of Film and Television. I can proudly say that for the 2023-2024 academic year, over 50% of our graduate students did receive awards. Uh, we have a few <laughs> on this panel um, that I know of from my first incoming class of recruitment um, that are recipients. So yeah, if any, if any of you want to take that question. Um, sure, I'll start. I definitely like could not afford this on my own. Um, FAFSA, it's like, you know, is that, um, I know a lot of people are scared of debt, but Ellen, I think like no matter what school you're going to go to, this one is probably the most feasible along with, you know, some of the scholarships that they will tack on to your acceptance. Um, but they give you FAFSA will help you and LME works with you, the financial aid office. Like I called them almost like once every two weeks to just throughout the process. Um, and they will work with you and they will give you money to um, one, to obviously afford tuition, but two, to help you with things like rent and just groceries, just, you know, help cushion some of that financial stuff. I will say is that like, if you're really, really worried, um, you have the time, especially in your first year to get a job. I'm currently working not just for the head of our department, but also like at this, you know, small other coffee shop for a few hours a week. And it's, it's doable. It really is, is that, um, but you also just have to be smart with like how you're spending your money. But uh, besides the tuition money I spent, you know, about working about probably 20 hours a week right now, I haven't had to touch the cushion money. Um, it's there, you know, because in a city like Los Angeles, anything could happen money wise and you always should be prepared for that. That being said is that it's, it's doable, just budget and, you know, um, just know that money is there, but also I do recommend if you're that worried, getting a job. I would definitely bounce off Emma with that. Um, so I did mention earlier, I'm a TA. Um, and so that's like one way I pay for school. I like with doing the fast, but you can get work study. LMU has so many 
jobs they cap you at 20 hours a week so I TA I um I'm the graduate assistant for the post-production department um overseeing stuff like that and the great part about a campus job is that they do work with your class schedule but there's also of course the siren call of working off campus where you probably get paid more um and you just have to look at your schedule figure out what you can handle and balance it from there I know I usually work like 35 to 40 hours a week other people hang out at 20 it's just all about like I said with the application like budgeting your time and then in this case budgeting your money so it's like especially coming from like an area of the country that is so much cheaper to live um I really miss when my rent was three hundred dollars um it's doable if you if you want it bad enough and you're super passionate about being here you will find a way to make it work Anna where are you sorry yeah go ahead I'm from Iowa (laughs) well yeah so I'm from Seattle so rent is very comparable there to what it is here um and like hannah i'm also kind of hovering around that that 35 hours a week um i do 10 hours at the writing center where i get to tutor students on both academic writing and creative writing um and also job application materials and like grad school application materials um and then i do anywhere from 20 to 25 hours a week in my internship all right and real quick for me real quick Get yourself in PDO. It's grad housing. You ain't got to worry about rent. It's already in tuition. I'm, well, we living pretty good. I don't have to worry about rent because, you know, the rich people on here pay rent. I can't afford that luxury, so I'm in PDO. Get you in grad housing. Also, I got to speak about my work study job because I have one. I have the luxury. I'm a grad assistant for none other than your net. So you might see me on them emails. You might see me returning them calls, but that's what I do. Oh, yeah, it's called Playa del Oro for the people who don't know. It's close to main campus. It's easy to walk to main campus to catch the shuttle to PV. It's real simple. If you like me and you don't want to walk, you go across the street, wake at KFC, get on that blue bus, and get on off at UV. And yeah. can I talk about the bus really quickly? So if you're an LMU student, you can go to the parking office, which is in main campus in University Hall, on, which is the very large building uh, on the first floor. And you can get, I don't remember the exact price. It's not bad. It's definitely a lot cheaper than it would be to get like, a regular bus pass but you can get a u pass which is basically a pass on the bus and metro in the whole city for like and you do it on a semester by semester basis including over the summer you can get one so i would also advise that um and in just talking about tuition you know and talking about all of that um like i, I also have a student job i actually work in the theology department on campus i'm going to hopefully Right now they have their grad assistant spots filled, but next year I'm going to start working as a grad assistant there. Uh, And that's a really good job. And then I'm also doing things down at a poetry place on Venice called Beyond Baroque. And I will say, I think kind of echoing what other people said, I think FAFSA is very important to fill out. And so kind of playing into something that Hannah was mentioning, I'm from Missouri, which is a much cheaper place (laughs) than Los Angeles. But one of that's actually kind of ends up benefiting, at least for me, I think it's benefited in terms of financial aid, because I think, and this is maybe a theory, maybe this is true. I'm pretty sure when you're Midwestern, the financial aid office looks at the income that you report and they think you're like a lot less, you're, I, they think you're poorer than you are if that makes sense and that you need more financial aid because they're like if this because they look at the amount that you're putting in and they're like if this person lived in los angeles they would not be able to make it they must need the financial aid so i, am <laughs> I you know kind of bouncing that. off of that um yeah. especially when when i applied for lmu i was you know like on my own for taxes and I was still in my undergrad. So like when I, you know, I submitted my financials, they were like, this girl is going to starve on the street. Yes. So, you know what, it works out in the end. Yeah, it does. I think there's another important element to touch on, at least in terms um, for film production students. Um, so the, the film production students have to, you have to fund your own projects. Um, and I know this seems kind of like daunting at first, um, but LMU actually helps you make it very doable. 
Um, for your first few projects, you can keep it very smaller scale. Um, there you get camera from school, lighting from school, um, and a lot of students will shoot at on campus um, and use the locations available here. Um, so then the the kind of biggest cost that goes into your films is providing food for your cast and crew. Um, so LME really helps you make it very doable um, to produce your your films on a lower budget. Um, and then when you start to get into those bigger projects where you're like, hey, I might, I might want a little little higher budget here. Um, there's a lot of resources to help you kind of figure out the crowdfunding um, element. And there are a lot of great websites like Indiegogo, Seed and Spark. Um, where you can um, kind of put your project up there and um, get a little extra budget uh, through crowdfunding. Thank and you, you get to own the rights to your to your film afterwards. So that's a it's a big perk. Thank you, Tucker. Yeah, very important to mention. Thanks for doing that. Uh, Thomas. Well, Tucker, oh, hi, I'm Thomas. Thanks for doing this. This has been actually, this has been great. Um, Tucker kind of addressed what I was going to ask about, which was the... Um, uh, funding of the projects and just sort of what sort of support exists because I know in my undergrad it was very much you've got to make this project whatever it is thesis um, good luck <laughs> so I wanted to just know more about like is there support the support that's offered um, if there's so, anything more to say about that uh, I think there is as a third year WPTV I am working on pre-production in fact like the majority of my life right now is working on pre-production for my thesis for next um semester i'll shoot and do post-prod um and while thomas did cover a lot i think one of the things is we do actually have dedicated classes on budgeting and scheduling um, that includes workshops on crowdfunding it includes workshops on how to apply to various scholarships and grants and other um you know, other ways to get funding into your project. Um, and in addition, and I guess as kind of a last resort, there is, you're able to add up to $5,000 to your um, your direct student loan to dedicate to your project. Um, most of us are hoping to avoid that, I'll be honest with you. Um, but we are really getting a lot of assistance in, um, casting using backstage actors access through LMU special codes for premium access. Um, we are primarily focusing on camera and lighting packages through campus because they're very good. Um, and just kind of looking at spending those funds on, you know, maybe colorists and, and, you know, editing passes that could really benefit the um, the project and so that we have the extra funds that we're raising this so that we can take our films out on on the festival circuit um, so that we can apply to things like student DGA and student academy awards um, but we are getting us uh, so many like resources through this process and we started so as a third year I mentioned I'm in my pre prod class but this process started last year in spring um, so we'll have three total semesters on our thesis projects um, where we have a dedicated class with dedicated professors who are helping us find what we need plus the student production office is incredibly helpful I kid you not I am in Joseph's office at least once a week talking about finding locations and how to negotiate for student rates um, and how to you know, work with SAG actors because I have SAG actors who are interested in my, in my thesis project. They want to act in my project and they want to like say my words and bring them to life. And I don't understand and I'm totally confused by this, but I love it. Um, but yeah, so I'm absolutely getting the support that I need. And um, the best part I think is that our cohort is also really supporting each other. Um, and we're getting second years like Hannah involved in, you know, kind of helping us on our project so they can see what they're in for next year um, or in two years if the first years are involved. And I did that. I was involved as a first year with third year thesis projects. I was involved as a second year. Um, I did everything from script D to first AD and helping produce just so that I had a sense of what I needed to do so that I felt prepared by this year. Does that answer your question, Thomas? 
yeah, I think that answered pretty well. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Casey. Hi. Um, Y'all have been like super helpful. I really appreciate all these answers. And I, I think my question is kind of like tacking on to this general like question of like how to make this work. Um, <laughs> Kara, you're kind of like living my life right now. It sounds like where you're like... <laughs> seems like you have your hands in a lot of different pies and I'd I'd love to hear like your take on this and also like anybody else but particularly like people involved in production um how do y'all um prevent burnout in film school and in what ways does LMU in particular support you from not like curling yourself straight into a brick wall so i will say i am super lucky that my cohort is what my cohort is because we are very close we are very supportive of each other we have each other's backs in everything um we hang out like we have a group of us that go once a week um on our a-list entourage to go see a movie and like if that's the only break that i get for the week at least i'm doing it with my cohort where we could like some of my cohort where we can talk about the movie afterwards and just be people um, but I will say that in terms of support from LMU, the, um, the wellness services here are top notch, top notch. Um, you have access to, um, you have access to therapy sessions each year. Um, and sometimes when I can't meet with my regular therapist, I'll schedule an appointment with a therapist on campus at LMU to just be like, okay, I'm stressed about this and I just need to vent. And like, I need to like not unload this on my cohort mates because we're all going through the same thing. Um, and we're, we've like, we've all talked in circles and we don't have solutions. And like, I, I get therapists on campus who are like, okay, so, you know, this is, this is your plan of action. Um, as for like, I'm not going to lie to you, Burnout is is a ever present, ever like hanging over my head threat. I'm doing a lot. Um, I'm working up to thirty five hours a week. I am doing my thesis. I am writing a drama pilot, like a full sixty page drama pilot. I'm in a horror class that is a four hour a week class where we watch movies, and I'm writing pages, um, and I'm doing my pre prod. Like, and I have not slowed down since I started. So, am I worried that like by the end of my, you know, am I worried that by graduation, I'm going to be like, I need a break. I can't do anything, but like, also I need to be in the industry and make money. Yeah. I'm worried about that. Um, but I just feel like with the support, with my cohort and with, um, you know, with the professors that we have here, like I have amazing professors who, um, support me in everything. They write me recommendations. I go to them for advice. They give me advice. I have a professor um, who I have not taken an actual class from him in over a year, but I sent him a pilot to review because I'm applying to the Disney Fellowship. And he sent it back to me with notes with 10 whole days to go. So I actually have time to do rewrites. Um, so yeah, there's what you're worried about. It's there. Like it's real. Um, I'm not gonna like sugarcoat that for you but like I so far feel like everyone has a similar experience with having an amazing cohort or ha like making friends making a, a group that they can really lean on um, and that's where you're gonna find your help with that hey, and I think please. Hannah should go next because she's in the year below me in the same program and Jordan also I think is a first year so she probably has stuff to say too <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's so fun. Um, so I would say, yes, burnout is absolutely the sword of Damocles hanging over our heads at all time. One of the things that I think really helps, LMU having a three-year program in, across all of the different disciplines, like we don't have to try and cram everything into two years. You get a year, like my, I'm in my second year right now. So I feel like, okay, like I know the ropes, I'm getting, like I understand what's going on. I'm getting to just, kind of experience that in the moment and feel like I'm getting to take advantage of stuff and learn and like kind of hone my skills before I'm like jumping into the great unknown like next spring. Um, another thing I cannot recommend enough is find something, find a hobby that is not tied to your computer, that's not tied to film school, that's just 
completely something you can totally back away from everything. Um, me and some of my fellow landlocked friends have all gotten into surfing. We are terrible at it, but when you're in the ocean, you cannot write pages, you cannot check your email, all that good stuff. So just being okay, being okay with like giving yourself the grace to take a break, which sometimes I struggle with. Um, that's like the best possible advice I could give. Thank you, Hannah. Jordan, did you also had your hand up? Yeah, I did. Also, another thing, these professors will meet you where you are. Listen, I just got diagnosed with ADHD last year. I was struck. I was dragging myself over the finish line for undergrad graduation. It was hellish. It was hell. And I just recently, I, I took on too much. I took on way too much. And so I was like slacking. And I literally was just in Mike's office like last week, last Wednesday, telling him like, I took on too much. And he's like, that's okay. We're going to get you back to where you need to be. Take your time, do the work. They will match you at your pace. If you're going at a snail's pace, they're like, okay, baby, we got you. We got you. I've gotten so many, I'm not telling you to do this, but I've gotten a lot of extensions. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not condoning that behavior, but I am saying that they really care more about you, your experience and your education versus you keeping you know, like, like, like running like this race with an invisible, you should only be comparing yourself to yourself anyways. Um, but yeah, these professors, they've been the most kind, understanding people. They know, like, and a lot of them have been students. So they get it. They understand. They know. Um, and that like goes a long way. And again, I said it before, I'll say it again. They will meet you where you where you're at. You need to take your time. Um, like Hannah was saying, I think it was Hannah, either Hannah or Kara, it's spread over three years. They're like, we got time. We will get you to where you need to be. Um, so and I don't know if other programs do that. Um, the USC kids are like having panic attacks every day. So I don't know if they are. Um, rest in peace them. So yeah. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, we will take Bree and then Connor, and then we'll move on to another question. So I will be 1000% transparent. Of course, you can expect nothing less from me. I am currently experiencing burnout right now. And it's a lot. I um, did not go to grad school right after undergrad. So I had like some years in between like experience in the real world, being a big girl, making big girl money to not being able to put as much hours in. Like I still work, but I don't work with LMU. So it's constant of me trying to keep like communication with my boss. Like, hey, like I know that I was able to put in this many hours, but I can't this week. Like I have this project and sometimes my bosses are understanding and sometimes they're not. And it stretches me really, really thin. This semester is 30 times worse than last year combined. I don't know what's going on with this semester and the workload, but what's keeping me going is my cohort and my teachers and the fact that I'm passionate about it. Like if this was taken away from me, I would probably die. Maybe not literally, but emotionally. But you know, but this is like what I want to do. Like I want to create art. Like I want to do storytelling. Like I want to produce. I love producing. And it's, it's like, I, if you take that away from me, like, wh like, why would I do that? But it's also me understanding that like, this is just a season. So I think if you put yourself in the mindset of like, this is just a season, which is something that I have to do. Like, literally, I'm not kidding. Every day I wake up, I'm like, this is just a season. This is just a season. Um, me and Tucker used to see each other all the time because we had class together. We never see each other that much. But when we run into each other, Tucker is always like, how are you doing? Or when I see Tucker, I'm always like, how are you doing? And we're very genuine about that. How are you doing question? And Tucker, he be laying it on me. I be laying it on him. We give each other a hug. And that hug make you feel better. Like it make, Tucker, don't my hugs make you feel like you're on top of the world afterwards? They do. They're very you nice. See what, you see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll be like, all right. I'm like, all right. Like if Tucker could do it, like I can do it. Like me and Tucker, we're in the same cohort. So like. I know multiple people, like we've all said, like your cohort is your family away from home, which I'm actually a lucky one. I'm at home. I was born and raised in LA. So I live like 20 minutes away from LA. So I got the double advantage. I got the support of my family and my school family. And like, you will need it and you will have to lean on it. 
um, I think it was Hannah who said, give yourself grace because you will feel like I'm not doing enough. Like I have all these assignments. Like I can't afford to take a break. Like I'm going to get behind. You might, but sometimes you're going to need to take that nap. Take the nap, take the nap, take it. I literally walked in from work today and I was like, dang, I got all these Zoom meetings, but I got 20 minutes for a nap. What did I do? For 20 minutes. So like you have to know where you are and you have to be accepting of where you are and give yourself grace for where you are at that time. And like Kara said, like you cannot avoid burnout. It's going to hit you, but allow it to hit you. You can use your tools as it's hitting you. Thank you, Brie. And Connor, before you go, I do want to remind you all, as I told my first years, you're here because you're meant to be here, right? Everything works out the way that it should. And just remind yourself of that, that you deserve that seat in the classroom just as much as anybody else. Because imposter syndrome is very real, but our faculty, your cohorts, and our resources on campus remind you that you absolutely belong. Um, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, and I'll echo, you know, I think everything that everyone said in this, I mean, in general, but particularly in this section has been very good and very important. Um, I'll also add, I mean, kind of the, t yeah, I'll also add that um, for me, something that's been helpful has been keeping some things as sort of maybe ritual is the right word, but at least routine um, of like, you know, I set my alarm for the same time every day, even if that means I wake up and I don't get out of the bed and I just sit there for a while like some days I'll just, I'll get up and some days I'll just sit there but like I set my alarm for the same time every day and I try to go to bed at about the same time every night and sometimes that's not going to happen because you have work to do and it's coming quick but if you try to keep yourself on a schedule like if you try to keep yourself on a routine then it's going to be easier to like move around that you know or have things that you do you know like right now like if you watch a t if you have a tv show that you watch that comes out weekly that's great you know i watch survivor every wednesday um stuff like you know having these things that, that you can make routine um is always going to be good every other tuesday there's a beatles fan club on campus actually that i knew people from an undergrad and so like i go to that every other uh every other tuesday because that's when it meets and like that's a routine and that's something that like if I can go to that every day, regardless of what else I'm doing, then it's something that can like be stable. And that can be really helpful when other things are maybe in flux and moving a lot. And like other people were saying, talk to, talk to, uh, talk to other people, because it's not like you're the only one who's dealing with this. You know, I had a much, I had like when I was an undergrad, my first year undergrad, that was a really tough transition. And I kind of got myself you know, it was by far the roughest semester of my entire education, my first year uh, as an undergrad, because I wasn't necessarily thinking about how, like, you can talk about these things and that other people are experiencing a lot of these things. Uh, and so, like, it's been a lot easier going into grad school, I think, than it was going into undergrad, because even if it's more work, uh, I'm better at dealing with it. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Connor. Uh, Curtis, thank you for being patient. Yeah, thank you for this. This has been great. Um, my question, and this anyone can take this, um, is there anything about your experience at LME that surprised you, be it positive or negative? Curtis, I'll answer your question because I have to leave in a few minutes for another meeting. Um, but the thing that surprised me the most about coming to LMU was that uh, things were professional, almost to like the standard of what you'd be doing in the actual industry. I took film classes in undergrad. I went to undergrad at the University of Texas at San Antonio. And like we had classes about making videos and using editing software, but it wasn't um, on the same level as what we have here so i was surprised by how like how much it mirrors what we'll actually be doing in the professional world i oh, definitely and, um, agree with that i would say um i was really well i was surprised very po in a very positive way at lmu like how kind our professors were like i was prepared 
for like knockdown, drag out, um, fighting, like to get any kind of approval um, or like good feedback. And like they are, they don't only give you feedback; they give you really good feedback, and they genuinely want you to succeed, which is really awesome. And I've loved that. Um, and you know what? I forgot what my other thing was that I was really surprised by. So it'll surprise us all later when I remember. <laughs> um, I'm also, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a bounce from Hannah because I also have to go because I have my pre-production class coming up soon. And I had five hours of work today and I really need to eat before class because that's a three hour class. Um, but my big surprise kind of similar to Hannah, like they told us that it was going to be like being in a writer's room in a lot of our uh, WPTV classes and it is like and I have friends who are writers assistants and script coordinators and staff writers and it is exactly what they do every single day like we're getting the exact same sort of experience um, particularly in a couple of the classes that really make me feel like I'm prepared to go into a writer's room and succeed because like if you pay attention to the industry at all which because you're here I'm assuming that you do you know that you know people can actually screw up their their first chances as staff writers by not saying enough or saying too much or not being on topic or being too shy and like you worry how do I find that balance well this program is going to help you find that balance um, your professors are amazing and they are going to tell you where you need to get better but they're also going to tell you what you're doing great and they're going to help mold you into that person who can be in the room who can you know, give notes and feedback in a way that is going to make a positive impression on the showrunner. They're going to teach you how to sort of, you know, take your cue from the professor, like you would take your cue from a showrunner. And there are things they're doing without like specifically saying this is what we're doing. But like, as I talk to my friends who are in rooms and, you know, doing various roles, I'm like, oh, they really are teaching me how to be in a room. Um, and yeah, negative surprises, not really. I, I, in my third year, I'm stressed as I'll get out, and I absolutely love this program, so can't help you with the negative. Thank you all so much. We are up on time. I know there are a lot of unanswered questions in the chat, but I do have all of those. I'm also going to put my email address in the chat in case you want to reach out to me personally um, with any unanswered questions, but Thank you all so much, SFTV grad students. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I can't thank you enough for giving your feedback um, and, and your you know experiences and love you guys. You guys are great. Uh, <laughs> so um, just as a final mention, the financial aid session and uh, the other sessions begin at six. So if you do have to hop off to join those, please do so. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Nice to see you, Yannette. Nice to see you too, Casey. Bye, y thanks, y'all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for being here.